Hello viewers, welcome to Ceasefire's AI Center. Today I am presenting you Ceasefire's Kitchen Suppression System, the Ultra Series. Let us look at some of its common components. Here I have 11.5 liter container shell. Ceasefire also has three more shells in 18 liters, 27 liters and 44 liters. Depending on the agent quantity, we have four models in which you can fill your agents. On top of the shell is the indirect low pressure valve. Indirect low pressure valve is fitted with a heat sensing tube on the head of the valve. It has two ports available for output. Whenever the valve is activated, the agent can be released either from one or both the outputs. On the ILP valve, we also have a pressure gauge. The pressure gauge indicates the pressure within your shell, which is going to be 19 bars. On the ILP valve, you also have an integrated ball valve. This is the lever to operate that ball valve. This ball valve is very essential in the operation of the system. If left closed, even if the system activates, it will not allow any output from any of the ports. The valve is always kept in its open position. If it is at 90 degrees to this, then it is a closed valve. There are provisions available to monitor the open and closed position of the valve by a reed switch. This reed switch is a basically magnetized switch which without any intrusion into the valve body can detect the position of the valve. Next, from the valve we have the supply line. The supply line is a SS304 supply line and its cross sectional area is 10 cross 8 with 1 mm thickness. This supply line then enters the hood. In the hood, the supply line moves in such a manner that you cover the fryer nozzles, the planar nozzle and the duct nozzle. All the supply lines have connectors and fittings attached to it. A fitting could be connected to a supply line to which a nozzle can be attached. There are only two types of nozzles which are used in this system. The 15 degree nozzle and the 40 degree nozzle. In most of the cases, the nozzles used are 40 degree nozzles. But in exceptional cases where the plenum length is from 0 to 1200, then you require only one 40 degree nozzle. But if it goes from 1200 mm to 4 meters, then we will use one 15 degree nozzle, which has a reach of about 4 meters. In case you go above 4 meters, then for the plenum you will use two fryer nozzles at least for coverage. Let's talk something about the nozzles in itself. The nozzles are SS nozzles. They come with their own SS cover. The maximum spacing allowed between two nozzles is about 800 mm. A single nozzle can also be used to protect a fryer. In those cases, we have two variants available with us. One variant which goes from 0 to 26.4 liter oil capacity with a maximum opening of the oil limited to 400 to 450 or vice versa and another model is available which is from 26.4 liters to 45 liters. There a nozzle can cover an opening of 600 maximum to 600 but limited to only 0 0.3 meters square. Now there are two ways 
that you can provide protection in a kitchen suppression system from ceasefire. One is called the zonal protection, another is called the total protection. When you are doing zonal protection, you are protecting a particular component or particular kitchen equipment from fire. When you are doing total protection, you are protecting every kitchen equipment under the hood. So, from this, we have two kinds of limitation arising again. If you want to do a complete protection, that is a total protection, you can cover up to 5.6 meter of hood length. And if you want to do selective protection, you can go up to 10 meter of hood length. Let us look at the next component. It is the most important component in the kitchen suppression system. It is the detection and the actuation of the system. For detection and actuation of the system, ceasefire uses something called a heat sensing tube. The black color tube is a modified polyamide with dimensions of 6 cross 4 mm, with 6 being the OD and 4 being the ID. The HST is connected through and through the planum and below or as close as possible to the duct opening. This HST then flows through and is protected outside the hood and is then connected to something of a very important component over here, the manual actuator. Every system will have one manual actuator and this manual actuator is placed in a location where a person can exit the facility in case of fire. On this manual actuator, you all can also connect a pressure gauge switch, the PGS monitors, the pressure within the HST and the output of the PGS is monitored by something called a response panel. The response panel can monitor the open and closed position of the integrated ball valve and it can also monitor the health or the HST pressure via the PGS. The response panel can do this for up to four systems individually. The response panel has an inbuilt router it has fault detection, it has coding for access to the panel and it has its own backup battery and a SMPS power supply. It has three relay outputs for third party integration. Now, let us understand the operation of the system. For any kind of kitchen suppression system in the Ultra series, the HST and the manual actuator connected to the ILP valve are now pressurized at 19 bar. Once the pressure of 19 bar has been achieved, the system is commissioned by opening of the integrated ball valve on the ILP. This, as I told you before, is the open position. So this is a commission system. Now there are two kinds of operations that are possible over here. Say in case there is a fire in the fryer, the heat rises, and as the heat rises, the HST will react to the heat and that will happen in a form of a rupture. As soon as a rupture occurs in the heat sensing tube, it depressurizes the tube in itself and this causes depressurization of the head of the ILP tube. The depressurized head of the ILP then allows the shell pressure to push up the piston within the ILP valve to its open position and the contents of the cylinder are then pushed out via a dip tube and the valve opening through the supply line and out of all the nozzles. The nozzles are aligned such a way that they can protect local or total protection to the kitchen equipment, to the whole of plenum and the ducts. In case of a selective protection, we might have limited number of nozzles protecting very specialized kitchen equipment, but even then everything behind the plenum and each of the ducts have to be protected at least by one nozzle. Another way to activate the system, let's look at that. Say a person 
or a person in the kitchen recognizes a fire and he doesn't want to wait for the electricity to rupture on his own and operate the system. In those conditions, we can use something called a manual actuator. To operate the system in this case, there is a safety pin which can be pulled out and then he bangs on the red knob which creates a puncture within a manual actuator which also causes the HST to lose pressure and the operation as I had mentioned before repeats itself and the system activates. So let's go ahead and look at the working of our kitchen suppression system with a light fire. For the purpose of our demonstration, we are now heating up oil in this deep fryer. We can take up to 10 liters of oil in this uh, deep fryer. The temperature at present has reached about 150 degrees centigrade. We will wait for the oil to self-ignite which would happen between 330 and 360 degrees centigrade. Once the fire occurs, the fire will rise and it will heat up the HST behind these filters and once the HST ruptures the system is going to actuate on its own. So for the uh, time we are going to wait for this to happen, uh, the video is going to be too long so we are going to uh, stop it in between and start it once again once we have self emission on the oil which will take a uh, good 30 minutes from now. So till then, uh, let me tell you something about the certifications and the backing we have on this uh, system, the KSS Ultra system. Uh, the whole integrated system has been approved as per LPS 1223 by LPCB. Uh, your HST, the heat sensing tube, is certified uh, by UL521 heat detectors. Uh, the HSD has been also been tested to the requirements of LPS 1223. Some aging tests uh, have been uh, done on the tube itself. And then if we look at the cylinders, the cylinders have been tested to EN3 and IS1568 standards uh, by PED. Most important, the valve in itself. Okay, The valve is uh, certified by TPED and it is also certified by PESO in India. So our fire is on, it is self ignited. Now we will wait for it to grow and as it grows we will look at what temperature it actually bursts the tube or what temperature it has actually reached when it bursts the tube. So we'll just